Hello, I'm Deborah Dickey. And on the screen uh, behind me are some of the community members who come together each day at my place of work. But before I talk more about them, I want to talk about the place where these community members come together. For anyone who's familiar with the concept of the third place that was popularized by Ray Oldenburg, you'll know that the third place describes the social sphere that is separate from our home being the first place and our work being the second place. Oldenburg characterized the third place as neutral ground where the main activity is conversation, where both regulars and new people visit where food is often shared, and where participation is not dependent on socioeconomic status. It is free or at least inexpensive. This description of the third place is much like the space where these community members come together each day. Other third places might be libraries or cafes. Historically, barbershops and hair salons have been active third places, and it is said that it was there that the civil rights movement was born. Third places satisfy our need for relaxed socializing, and they create space for intellectual and creative engagement. I became interested in the idea of place a number of years ago. On its own, the idea of third places and their potential social impacts are interesting enough. But for me, the idea of place becomes particularly interesting when considering socioeconomic status. Many of our social and cultural activities require payment to participate, and anyone with children in sports knows this. So it's the added layer of social exclusion due to lack of income that makes the third place crucial to all our communities. But the significance of third places goes deeper. I was recently reading about the consequences of not having the means to participate and contribute to social and cultural activities. This document referred to this as the exclusion from social production. The word production was interesting to me. It goes beyond considering income and whether someone can afford to join a particular activity. Instead, it speaks to the fact that all people need meaning and purpose in their lives. People flourish when given the chance to be producers as opposed to solely consumers. We all have some degree of need to create and add value to our surroundings. The challenge for many people living on the margins is that there are few opportunities to be in a social sphere that embraces the value they can bring to their surroundings. Two and a half years ago, when Dartmouth Family Center, where I work, uh, opened the Community Food Center, we were unprepared for the way in which the characteristics of the third place would intersect with the lack of opportunity for social production that people had been experiencing. We were inundated with community members who wanted to do more than participate in a program or receive a meal, despite the barriers they faced to participating in mainstream activities. They wanted to be behind the scenes, making food, growing food, fixing things, cleaning spaces, running programs, contributing ideas. And that's what they did, close to 200 of them in the past two years. People want to add value to their surroundings, and that's what's made our space inspiring, relevant, and often colorful. One of those community members is Peter. Before the food center opened, Peter knocked on the door holding a paper with his phone number and let me know that he could be our cleaner. I had never met Peter before, and at that time I wasn't looking for a cleaner. But Peter was persistent, visiting and asking several times a week. Soon, Peter was referring to his job and asking if he would need a uniform when he started cleaning. <clears throat> for several months, I would say, remember, Peter, we're not looking for a cleaner right now, and he would go on his way. Finally, the time came when we needed a cleaner, and I thought, I better hire Peter. 
Not because I knew he was good at cleaning, he didn't even have references, but because somewhere along the way, I too had started thinking of it as Peter's job. Peter's persistence illustrates that need we all have for a place that allows us each to contribute. I distinctly remember another conversation I had with a woman who has struggled much of her life with opioid addiction. She described with desperation in her voice how she just wants to feel like she has a purpose. I remember her saying everyone needs to feel like they have a purpose. Third places create the conditions for this to happen when circumstances exclude you from mainstream activities. Like most organizations, we regularly collect impact data, and there's one question that I find particularly interesting. We ask community members if they think their participation at the community food center is important to other people. Most recently, 93% said yes. They show up because it's important to someone else that they do, and that is purpose. So I invite you to think for a moment about your own social spheres or the third places in your communities. What place outside of home and work do you benefit from and contribute to? Maybe it's a club or maybe it's a regular neighborhood potluck that you take part in. Is this place somewhere that all people, regardless of income and ability, are currently benefiting from and contributing to? And if not, how do we make room? So back to these folks who uh, interact at the community food center each day. When I asked them if I could use their picture for this talk, I also asked them to tell me about the give and take of this place. In other words, how do they benefit and how do they contribute to this third place? So I want to end with their words. This is Amanda and she said, I received support from a large circle of people and I've gained confidence. I also pass along what I know and I share my life experience. This is Peter, who, by the way, helps clean every Friday. <laughs> he said, I get really good food and I give my help. I'm a good helper. And I would add that he's a master of persuasion. <laughs> and lastly, this is Carolyn. She said, I learn new recipes and it keeps me mobile. I give my volunteer help and my friendship. Thank you.